Today we're going to meet Ali. He's a cybersecurity expert working on Internet of Things. He is advancing that field in the United States and he got his EB2AW approved. My name is Oscar and I'm not a lawyer. In this channel, we talk about green card categories in which you can self petition like Ali did. In EB2AW or EB1A, you can do this process and get permanent residency without having a job sponsor. You can also do it without a lawyer. You can do it by yourself, saving a lot of money. Let's stop talking. Well, at least let's stop talking by myself and let's meet Ali. Today we welcome Ali. Ali is um, a person I know a little bit because uh, we've talked in the past. So Ali, thank you for, for being here today. My pleasure, Oscar. Thank you. And first of all, uh, congratulations on your I-140 approval. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, so um, you are, by the way, you are going to be the first person being interviewed in 2024. So congratulations also on that, if that is, if that is an achievement. Uh, nothing compared to your approval, of course. Um, I, I wanted to, to start with a brief introduction about yourself. Uh, we always start there, like, who are you as a professional? What is leading you to the US? All right, um, thank you for this opportunity, Oscar. Um, so my name is Ali. I'm from originally Turkey. Mm -hmm. I currently live in Houston, Texas. I'm a computer engineer working in the IT industry since 2007. So it's almost uh, 15 to 16 years. Uh, I work in Turkey, then Germany, and currently I am in US. Mm -hmm. So I did my master's in US before uh, coming to here. So I started my master's in COVID. So that's why I'm saying I started before coming here, but then I completed my master's in computer engineering again. And then, yeah, that's a, a short summary of my background. Yeah. So <coughs> why do I know you? Because uh, I, I said that, that we knew a little bit uh, each other. Um, so you hired this express review service a few months ago, not, not so long ago, because you had an RFE on your original petition, right? So can you tell me, you know, why, di why did you decide to contact Oscar in this case? Yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, when I was, after finishing masters, I realized that I was working LPT. So I have been working in the healthcare industry, by the way. So I was trying to figure out how can I get a green green card. Mm -hmm. And I took some lawyers in, in the market, but I, I was not satisfied because I, I heard and I, I feel that it will take so much time uh, with working lawyers. So I tried to s search Google, YouTube, everything. Mm -hmm. I realized that your, your, your channel is is uh is not only popular but also giving like you know specific specific information about the process like steps and everything mm -hmm. and then i started watching your old videos basically on youtube yep. uh and i i i feel that i i'm ready to apply mm -hmm. and in september early september to uh, last year 2023 i sent my documents i i for i 140 EB2 National Interest Waiver mm -hmm. and before getting consultant from me, right? So in, in after a week, I got the RFE basically. Like in September I sent and after a week, I got the RFE. No, and I said, so I said, okay, well, I got the RFE, then it means I'm not ready 100%. So I don't mm -hmm. want to lose time because as, as you know, we have only three months to get yeah. back. Basically, I should have sent all documents by December 2023. Mm -hmm. And I contact with you in early, I, I feel, I remember like end of September or something, I contact yeah. with you and, yeah. and uh, we had an opportunity to review my I-140 and I got the feedback and yeah, then it, it worked out. And after like a couple of weeks, I changed the things and then in November I sent and I, I got the re response in December. Basically, overall around three months i got the uh, yeah record. that was very good i mean i always say that rfe like the response to your response of the rfe so the final decision usually comes fast but in in your case that was very good because it came 
before the end of the year so you could breathe i'm sure uh, going into the holiday season which is which is an extra um recognition i guess you know so you can you can have a very good time at the end of the year but um let's go back to your uh, original case uh, then we're going to talk a little bit about your rfe but tell me what is your endeavor which is you know the way you usually start your cover letter Sorry. so my endeavor was advancing internet of things security Mm -hmm. uh, by using hardware security modules. So this is a bit like specific thing in the cyber security event. Uh, however, in why I got the RFE is my endeavor was not clear, right? Yeah. So I, I, I think it's important to share here with the audience that the proposed endeavor, as you mentioned all in all videos, should be very clear. Mm -hmm. And I got the RFE from that part. So I got the RFE from the uh, substantial merit and national importance part. So I talk a lot. I wrote many things, but mm -hmm. it's not to the point. Yeah. It was not to the point. So that's why uh, I got the RFE. Yeah. The and, and by the way, that is one of the most common things I see when I review um, original petitions, not not just RFEs like in your case, but but I think it's a very common mistake that people don't articulate it very well and and one one tip i always give i gave you <laughs> at the time is you know start that chapter with my proposed endeavor is and just have a one paragraph message that the officer will clearly understand so you did that in your in your response right yes yes Oscar. and um so your endeavor is about internet of things um cyber security and one thing that I liked about your response uh, when you sent me your your draft of, of response is that you were able not only to provide that high level proposed endeavor statement, but you also broke down your endeavor into, I would call different legs. You talked about how you could apply your knowledge to um, the financial sector, to healthcare, of course, that you have a lot of experience with, uh, even consumer products. So. Tell me, um, how difficult was it to, to prepare that endeavor, those layers of endeavor? Right. When I when I was trying to write the, this endeavor section, uh, I wanted to give different uh, sector information, not only where I work, but also uh, as, a, as a topic and the effect or influence of the uh, and over because mm -hmm. uh, basically USAS wants to see something at the end of today financial right I need to give something I need to put something on as a value to the uh, to the states so that it really affects different or it really gives value to the different sectors because yeah. at the end of today every sector has its own potential that's what I tried mm -hmm. and so that's why I wanted to mention like consumer electronics, home security, healthcare industry, and financial sectors. So I tried to give every single these uh, parts as a chapter, like, you know, subsection. So mm -hmm. I talk about my, my proposed endeavor will enhance financial sectors because of here and there. And mm -hmm. I think most important part that actually you mentioned in your YouTube videos as well, that I tried to find a find exhibit exhibits from the mm -hmm. go government websites right yeah. so this is something i need to really emphasize i try to get all inform most of the information in my um petition letter i got it from like uh, nist go or cisa go or um, white house mm -hmm. you know so yeah. i try to find articles that is really relevant to my field yeah. And I add it to my exhibits. And not only that, remember that one thing that we talked during the review um, is that when you present those documents, then you have to further explain how your endeavor will help with those um, legal uh, initiatives or whatever the government is trying to do. So you cannot stop there. You have to say, and by the way, I'm going to do this in this area that will help the US, right? that's correct that's correct uh yeah because you, it's not only theory but you also need to say i can do it in this way i have done or if you haven't done yet at least you need to give a proper reasons that how you're gonna 
articulate how we're gonna implement in the near future. Yeah, exactly. And so one thing that I also remember from your case is that you added a professional plan. Um, it was not, I don't think it was something crazy in terms of uh, length of it, at least the draft I, I saw at that point, but it is a very nice way to further show them, look, I'm ready, I have a plan. Yes, yes, uh, because I think you, you you just told me that it would be very beneficial or it will add the value to the petition letter. So that's what I wrote it around like three pages, I would say. And I started with my background. I tried to give like uh, heads up to the USCIS by saying, hey, I am working in this field for a long time in different com companies, in different uh, countries, stuff like that. And the finally, an important part is like, you know, it's just aligned with my proposed endeavor. This is something yeah. very important. And I also added like a uh, five years plan, like three years mm -hmm. plan, five years plan, and also like uh, long-term plan to my uh, to my professional plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's that's great. And um, <clears throat> a little bit of advertisement for my course here. Uh, in my course, I, I do talk about the importance of the professional plan. And, and now we even have an agreement with a company for those who, unlike you, you did a good job writing your professional plan. And many people will want to do that. But uh, some people may want to have professional help. So in the course, we have an agreement with a leading company and they'll they'll get a discount for, for people that want a professional or a business plan. So it's little things that we keep adding to to, to do-it-yourself petitioners. At the end of the day, um, this whole thing, YouTube and the course and everything is designed for people that want to do it themselves like, like you did. You are a case of the more independent people because you did pretty much everything by yourself. My contribution was um, tiny in, in your whole case. Do you want to be like Ali? If you are very serious about this process and you want to be successful and you want to do it by yourself, a DIY process, I invite you to visit eb2naw.info, a website that I created that has a lot of information about this category in which you can self-petition. And out of all those things that you can find there, the one that I really like the most, the most comprehensive tool for you is my online course. In the online course, you can find all the content that you may find in my channel, in my website, and with way more detail, you can find it structured in a way that flows very nicely so you can save time and you will find a bunch of lectures under each of these modules that you have on the screen. So you can go to the requirements and then open those lectures and start going through all the requirements. You can see how to put together your cover letter, my tips on how to fill out the forms. You can even go to the adjustment of status and consular processing portion because now the course also covers those parts. You can submit questions, written questions in each of the lessons. I prioritize replying to those over anything else I do. And now we also have monthly live sessions where you can come on a video call with me and you can ask me questions. We spend one or two hours and, you know, I try to also put face to your names, to all the students in the course um, that, that I typically wouldn't know otherwise. So take a look at that course and join if you think it will give value to you. Let's talk a little bit about one thing that UCIS did not argue in your case. Your RFE was about prong number one, was about prong number three, because automatically if you fail prong number one, you fail prong number three. So let's talk about number two, which is you are well positioned to advance the, the proposed endeavor. Um, what did you submit so you could convince them easily that, that you are well positioned? Uh, in, the, in the well positioned section, uh, I really mentioned about, about my qualifications. I talk about my uh, like education, like bachelor degree and masters, but just giving a like heads up in the, in the beginning of the section. And then definitely I talk about where I worked and where I did these products in, in IoT and cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. I really gave uh, different uh, conferences that I attended, some hours that I got in the, in the history. And also I added some other things like um, 
why I am subject matter of expertise here, right? So I really mm -hmm. mentioned because this award I got, let's say 2015 in this conference because of this product. And if I find any like article or something on the internet that's, that's really related to my uh, uh, product, I actually uh, print it out and add it to my petition letter. Yeah. And, and what about recommendation letters? What did you have there? Uh, I got uh, eight recommendations letter. Uh, mm -hmm. from, some of them from the professors that I worked before, and some of them are from the uh, field. So yeah. basically, I got it from my uh, old colleagues and current colleagues, and I just tried to sum up with eight recommendation letters. Once you got into the RFE and you had to, again, talk about problem number three, which is, I, I say that it is the least important problem, but you still have to argue for it. Um, you probably touch again, well, I know you did touch again on the importance of your endeavor, on how you are well positioned, and UCIS accepted that. Um, was it difficult to, to think about problem number three for you? Because many people struggle with that part of, of the petition. I think it's, I think number one and number two are, as you said, it's more clear for everyone. It's also the same for me, more clear, but in the number three is basically as far as I understand from the whole story about watching your YouTube videos and then checking the websites, different websites, I really try to give like why I give a value to the United States in the first section of my section three, I divided into two. The first part was about the benefits of my contribution. Mm -hmm. And second part is why I don't need labor certification. It's one of our one of our uh, benefit that we apply for national interest waiver. So for these two, I really support it with the first two sections, which is yeah. my proposed endeavor and my qualifications. So mm -hmm. in these two sections, I really got th those you know uh, filtered information I would call and then yeah. put it there with with the some recommendations. Uh, recommendation letters from the advisors, or I would call my colleagues. So yeah, I really, like some quotes, right? Yeah. Exactly. I really added something is a, like kind of filtered version of number one and number two, section one and section yeah. two. In the, in yeah, the you, don't, you don't want to repeat exactly the same thing, but you want to kind of extract the very critical portions. Yes. And if I remember correctly, um, one of the things that you provided um, for, at least for pro number three, I, I don't remember for, for pro number one, but you talked about this very recent initiative about um, artificial intelligence and STEM in general. In pro number three, I think you touched a little bit on why your endeavor is STEM and your presence in the US will help the country to be competitive. So do you think that that plays a role in, in the success? Uh, I think so, because it's just, uh, it's historical information, as you said, it's important to mention about uh, why STEM, why I'm part of the STEM, and as, as STEM is a, is a high priority from U U USCIS and also government, so I, I gave some exhibits, I added to my section 3 by saying, uh, because of the government wants to have those specific fields like national importance in terms of AI, big data. I didn't specifically write something about AI and big data or something like that, but, but my field is all already in cybersecurity, yeah. which is part of uh, STEM and also which is part of the uh, White House uh, articles. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I agree with you. So it, if you really work on these fields like AI or big data, or currently we have different technologies coming up. So whenever you have something different, it's I really encourage people to really mention those details. Yeah, to use it. I mean, if it's there, it's for you to use. So, so take advantage, right? Yes. Uh, because at, at the end of the day, I mean, those um, executive actions or fact sheets from the White House, they are just illustrating what the US wants. So if you can find that article, that means that the US wants something that you can provide. So use it. <laughs> that's correct. That's correct. I agree. And that's something I believe the, uh, the reviewers, they're checking, right? So they really understand 
how I reflect my uh, qualifications and experience to the reality, to the real life and the sector. Yeah, and, and one important thing is that maybe there's a misconception that the officers will do part of the job for you, that if you just throw some information there, they will say, oh, yeah, I, I get uh, he does this and this, so he can help us with this. No, 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 it's not like that. You need to give them everything. You need to, to give them the arguments, the proof, the evidence, everything. Um, so uh, is this is, I'm sure you know, this is not the time to be lazy. Um, if you don't put it on paper, it, it, it didn't happen really, right? <laughs> yes, uh, I definitely agree. Uh, I, I, I actually wrote master's thesis before. Uh, I really encourage people like to focus on this. This is not something, as you said, it's not like two or three pages per article. You really need to focus on this is something like thesis. You need yeah. to think that when you say something, if you say something about AI, you really need to give your AI background and also maybe recommendation letter section and also about like uh, government articles that really gives you insight of your background. So it's like three, four legs, as you said, it's not an yeah. easy, easy job. Uh, yeah. It's not. And, and even though in this channel we motivate people and we paint a, a positive picture, um, it's also important to say, you know, if you go into this, be sure that you will need to work a lot. I don't know how many hours you put, but I'm sure you put plenty of time. Yes, uh, I really, yeah, it's, I applied in September, but I, I really think that I started in maybe uh, June or something, like at least three months of work, uh, because you are also working in the daily time, so it's not easy to focus, but I, I believe, um, depending on the person, but at least, at least one month, right? So mm -hmm. I believe, at, I got it like three months, but at least one month should be consumed to make yeah. something very mature. Yeah. Yeah. And it will depend on each person's, you know, situation, was their job, was their family, you know, like all those personal things, but, right. but you, you'll need to sit down for, for a while. I, I can say that I did a master's, I did a PhD and uh, writing my AB2NAW was, um, I'm not going to say it was more difficult than, than a PhD, but, but it required a level of discipline yes. also. Yes, I agree, definitely. So that's why I'm saying it's like second master's degree kind of <laughs> yeah. thesis, I would yeah. say. Yeah. So um, I'm thinking that I remember now that in your case, the RFE actually had a mistake or or something that the UCS <laughs> forgot. Uh, do, you do you remember about what I'm talking about? Yes. yes, yes. Let's talk about that for a second. So people know that they also make mistakes. Actually, in, very, in the initial part of my petition letter, I really emphasized my master's degree, uh, but uh, USCIS asked again in the RFE before asking my proposed endeavor, like uh, I need to change the proposed endeavor, it's as it's called the request RFE part of the RFE, but they also emphasized in, in as, a, as a sentence, they do it accidentally, uh, we don't know, right? So by mistake yeah. or not, I really added again in my RFE yeah, by saying yeah. here's my uh, master's degree as in the exhibits, you can see my scanned version, etc. But you're right. So sometimes they added something that you actually emphasized very specifically, but still there. So yeah, you need yeah. to give, give back again. And I mean, it, that's the first part of the, of the review they do. They, they um, in your case, you were doing the advanced uh, degree route. Uh, so you provided your diplomas and usually in the RFEs they have a section that is clearly labeled advanced degree before anything in the matter of Danasar. And in your case, they just skip that section altogether. And so I remember I, I told you uh, in your RFE response, even though I'm, I think I said, even though I am 99% that they are accepting what you said because they didn't explicitly said it you should again tell them, look, I sent you your, uh, the diploma and, and the transcripts because y you only have this one chance uh, in the RFE, so you cannot go back and forth. It's, it's better to repeat, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's better to make at least uh, give them uh, heads up again and again to, as you said, it's more clear right uh, after a while, yeah. Yeah, so do you have any tips, advice that that you want to share with people that may be watching this video? If you want to have the green card in the United States, 
uh, if and the, if you are educated and we have some experience depending on the field, it's good to go with this visa category. I believe YouTube videos from Oscar basically is really helpful. Actually helped me a lot. I don't know, depending on the person. It helped me a lot, but it really gives you specific points that you really miss, right? Because this is something kind of article and you, you don't have an advisor basically. Yeah. Your your advisor would be YouTube videos or you need to contact with the lawyer or mm -hmm. you need to contact with some other experts. But at the end of the day, you need those advisors. Yeah. And I really appreciate for Oscar because it's uh, okay. I did it. I wrote it, but I really got the advice, mm -hmm. and um, and it helped. Right. Mm -hmm. That's why we are here today to talk mm -hmm. about it. So mm -hmm. I really recommend uh, colleagues, my friends, saying that okay, this is something you this you can do it. Yeah. Most probably you will succeed, but you need to pay attention. As you said, you can lose the game. And you yeah. need to reapply. Okay, you can reapply, but you will consume another money, right? So it's not yeah. an easy game. And, and months of time also. Yes, months of time because, as you said, it's you have your priority date, mm -hmm. and then according to that, you will apply for residency and the green card. So uh, I think important part is really focusing on the specific YouTube channels as yours, yeah. and then got got if you have time and your if you have resource, it's better just contact with you and get the consultancy as well. So I really feel yeah. that uh, your help and your experience on this field will be helpful. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad and thank you for saying that. Um, I think one tip I would give based on yours is at, at the very least, um, have someone read your petition to make sure someone that is not in your field to make sure that they understand what you are saying. So if they can understand that Ali is working um, in the uh, Internet of Things, um, mitigating cybersecurity issues, if they can tell you what you wrote and you, you can see, OK, this person really understood what I'm talking about, then that is a very good sign. And of course, the next level is to consult with someone that understands the structure of the document, what the office was like and, and all those things. But at, at the very least, have another set of eyes to, to read what you wrote. That, that will be good. Right, because you never know who's going to review your case, as you said. And it's obviously important that somebody from your, somebody that is not from your field really need to focus on your paper and article, a petition letter, basically, to understand the flow, as you said. He or she doesn't need to understand the details, but at least the flow. So it really makes sense for him. Yeah. yeah, because um, I can tell people that part of what I do in the in these express reviews is to really see if I understand it. Because most of the times, like in your case, I'm not in your field. I'm I'm in biotech, <laughs> nothing to do with with what you do. But if I don't understand what you are telling me in that petition, I can assume that the officer will not understand. Then, of course, I do I do look at at uh, the endeavor if it's well written if it's written in the format I like, if the national importance is argued correctly and all those more technical things. But number one is, do I understand what, what Ali does? If I don't, then um, let's stop him right here and, and let's re rework the whole thing. Um, we are finishing the, the interview, but, but I want to go back to a few days ago when you got the, the, the notice, or I don't know if you, if you saw it on the on the UCIS website or, or you got the actual uh, paper notice, but what were your feelings when, when, when you got the news? <laughs> so yeah, at, at the end of the day, we, I wanted to get the feedback, right? So I sent like, um, I believe November 16 or something. Uh, so, and, and then I waited and I said, it should come before end of year. Yeah. because uh typically they send like in in a month that's what i'm checking from the websites and everybody says typically when you send in the premium processing rfe uh by, uh, by the way i send premium processing i think it's important to emphasize so typically they get back in a month so they got back to me in three weeks uh, after i sent my rfe well it was <laughs> it was something <laughs> excited i would say i was very happy because you do something and you see the you know the response and you say okay 
I consumed that much hours, uh, day, days and nights, but at the end of the day, I got something. Yeah, it's worth it. Yeah. Yes, and at that, and this is this is something that you don't lose by time, right? This is not something like two years of uh, immigrancy. You are saying, okay, I proved myself for the for the uh, nation for this government. Yeah. So this is something. Yes, I was very happy, but it's not over, as you know. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I need to go through the I I four hundred eighty five. Yeah, to finish the case. Yeah. yeah, and adjust your status. And for that, I'm sure you will be following the famous visa bulletin, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, let's let's hope that now that we are starting 2024, that the visa bulletin will will move. I hope that at least in the change of quarters, it will jump a little bit each time, and and people like you will will be able to adjust status. But are you in a in a hurry, or uh, do you still have some time of buffer time for your immigration status i have some time i have like uh kind of two years of time for my ex opt extension i'm yeah. kind of i'm kind of uh, yeah flexible on that yeah that's good I, I i hope by by then you you'll be at least you, you would have filed the adjustment of status that yes that will give you peace of mind <laughs> exactly yeah so any any last thing you want to share or say or did we cover pretty much everything thank you for your time i will definitely say uh thank you for um sharing with your information and you know uh support on the on the adventure i would say <laughs> yeah and uh i i really strongly recommend everyone from here uh to focus more in the details it seems like an easy cake yeah uh, one of my friends they did like he did it uh, like himself and he's he just did it he say okay i'm gonna apply and i'm gonna get he, he believed himself so it's not an easy case so you really need to cover many things uh i really recommend follow uh, people following the uh internet information from different sources mm -hmm. and i was lucky to, that i i found you mm -hmm. and your channel so i got the uh valuable information i i really got good benefits from it but uh overall uh thank you that would be all yeah no thank you thank you for your trust i was i was very happy to to talk with you back in the day to talk with you now and and to be a, a tiny part of of your case as i usually say when i get emails like yours saying you know i got approved like that I mean, it sounds silly, but but that really makes me happy. So um, so thank you for sharing also those positive results and and good luck to you in your life in the U.S. and and I'm sure the U.S. will benefit a lot from having you and and you will help the U.S. with those cybersecurity issues in Internet of Things and those things that I cannot even comprehend, but I know they are they are very important. Thank you. Thank you so much, Oscar. My pleasure.